All right, folks. And while I'm uh, while I'm getting suited up here, I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now. There's a lot of background noise because Times Square is busy. It's a busy time tonight, and you got uh, I got people working on the roof over here. I got people jamming out. We got benders still going on. But you know what? It's a beautiful, beautiful evening. The sun has went down over the mountain. And I wait for the sun to go down over the mountain over there or else it bakes the camera and I have to put an umbrella over it. So, I, you know, whatever. It's fine shooting at night anyhow. And what I'm gonna make tonight, folks, I'm just making uh, a little chicken, chicken macaroni. That's all I'm gonna make. I got my beautiful uh, assistant here and She's got her hair up, looking a little bit haggard. But if she puts her hair down, then we'll, we'll get a, an appearance. Can you open up that butter, baby girl? So I want to thank everybody for joining me on my cooking show tonight. <clears throat> I'm drinking a little Sammy Light, just chilling. And you set it in there. Thank you, Dawn. Just chilling out today, folks. I worked on a, on a video all morning. Got that published of our little, uh, our little road trip up to Hundred Islands. What a great time. I want to give a big shout out to uh, Miss Tess, everybody who uh, coordinated that. Uh, that. That was a great time. Uh, just a beautiful walking tour, going up there to see the, the story of Jesus and getting up to the top with the big statue, you know, like, uh, like the one in Rio. And that thing's like a four story statue. It's, it's pretty awesome. So I had a great time. If you haven't checked out that video, it's the one I, I published, I guess, previous to this well there might be one more hill i gotta go in there and see what i'm lacking on editing <clears throat> so yeah so tonight what i'm going to be cooking on <laughs> forest g in there is fired up folks if you've never watched any of my cooking shows i'm using a uh, lodge manufacturing cast iron made in uh, south pittsburgh tennessee this is a what they call a 3.2 quart combo cooker and this is not a sponsored video. I don't have any relation with Lodge, but I do love quality products that are made in, in my homeland, United States of America. <clears throat> and the good thing about this thing is this thing serves as a lid, but you can also use it as a second pot. And you, st you stack it on the top, you can put coals on the top, and it also serves as a Dutch oven. So this thing, I researched their products you know, they are sold here in Manila through an authorized distributor. They're legitimate. I uh, got them off Lazada. Yeah, it, but anyhow, it's not sponsored. I just, I just love the products. And I'm using this uh, Brick, B-R-I-K-K, -K, uh, induction cooker. And it works pretty good. It, it doesn't seem to have the horsepower or the wattage to get this thing as hot as sometimes I want it to go. But you know what? It works, it does the trick. I had the ladies chop up a little bit of chicken, uh, small pieces, and all I'm working with is some tomatoes, onions, and garlic, and all I'm gonna do is just cook the chicken. Um, you know, just get that going. Mix in, uh, mix in some cream, and then I'll throw the noodles in there. And then I got this little thing of uh, processed cheese. Now we don't eat a lot of cheese over here, especially processed, well, we don't eat cheese, period. Um, since I moved to Southeast Asia, you know, a couple things that really got cut out of my diet was cheese and beef. Um, and that's just living in this area of the world. But tonight I'm just gonna kinda cheese this up a little bit. It's not gonna be thick, gooey, cheesy because I only got one package. I'll put a little salt and pepper in there and some butter and maybe just a hair bit of spice. But what I figured I would do tonight, folks, is, uh, you know, my buddy pulled out some comments and I'm gonna try to, uh, well, I gotta use this thumb. But what I'm gonna try to do is just answer some comments while I'm doing this cooking show. <clears throat> All right, folks, without further ado, I'll turn this on, hit the, hit the function. I'm gonna take this thing up to, uh, we'll take it up to 90. <laughs> when you're cooking outdoors, the cool thing is it don't, it don't matter how much steam you got coming off of this thing. 
Oh shit, I dropped the butter on my custom cooking table. Folks, it rained a little bit the other day on my custom cooking table and it had all this white crap on here and I thought it like really messed up the finish. But the ladies were able to clean it off and you know what I'm almost thinking, I'm not certain, but I'm almost thinking that's like residual ash left over from the tall volcano. I'm not sure, but they got most of it cleaned off of there. I was really pissed off because it just come with a small rain. And I was like, damn, Johnny must have used some cheap ass shellac, but they got it cleaned off. And I'm thinking, well, damn, it sort of looks like ash. I don't know. So folks, using my trusty wooden spatula and no time like the present, let's just drop that chicken over in there. Get this show on the road. Yeah, if you're cooking, you know, we live in a, a little apartment right now, a little in the penthouse suite, as I call it. Beautiful little place. But as cooking any any kitchen without a proper vent hood, you know, you start cooking spicy foods and, and just uh, really smoking up the place. I guess maybe I've been outside the West, you know, too long. I'm, I'm down with the outdoor kitchen. You can call it a dirty kitchen, wherever you want to refer to it, but you know, like in Thailand, well, Southeast Asia, a lot of places outside the West, people cook in basically sort of like an open outdoor kitchen. And they don't stink up the house. And I love it. That's why one of the reasons that I'm cooking outdoors and when the rainy season comes up, I'll be moving this operation, I think downstairs in the, the like the stock room area. Uh, because it's kind of open, you know, I can open up the door. I just don't like cooking indoors. You know, you just feel like you're stinking up the place and getting things, something you gotta clean up. I ain't gotta clean up nothing out here and I don't need a bent hood. How can you not love that? So folks, I'm on a 280. And I think this is a 2200 watt induction cooker. I think I need more wattage, but it's doing the trick. It's doing the trick. I like to get my meat done first where I know 100% it's done. And then I start adding other ingredients. And, um, you know, you leave, you leave the West with all the regulations and everything in place about food safety. You go to other areas of the world that don't have any food safety regulations in place. Well, that's one of the reasons I always cook my meat very thoroughly. And most people say I burn it, but that's fine. Because I'm cooking any type of pathogens or bacteria, oh shit, out of this meat. Damn, even with these safety glasses on, it just got hit by a damn piece of grease. That's crazy. These are pretty good glasses, but uh, my... Uh, my Wiley X's finally, they played, <clears throat> folks, they were great, they were great pieces of gear. I love Wiley X, those are my, my glasses, my sunglasses. But what happened, those things were uh, so old, they were, getting, they were so scratched up. And then I went out a couple weeks ago, got drunk, came home and they were gone. So somebody got my glasses, I lost them, what have you. Tomato, onion, garlic. So I gotta order me a new pair of Wiley X. <clears throat> I like those with the little foam seal. Cause when you're riding a motorbike, you know, it keeps out, keeps out all the uh, excess dust and dirt. All right, so I don't know if you can see that, but what I, what I figured out is the one roll for this uh, camera that I'm not real fond of this Sony RX100 is it's a perfect B cam uh, for me to use over here so I can do close-up views of what I've got going on and there's my setup right there there's my main camera so I finally figured out a roll for this $1,200 brick that I'm not very fond of and I'm not against Sony I love Sony that camera right there that's shooting this cooking shows is a Sony my original camcorder I had is a Sony, but this thing here just is not 
been a good product and maybe the the one they're up to now with the rx100 mark 7 maybe it's a better situation oh shit smoked up the lens my god uh, but this mark 5 just didn't do it for me all right folks so while this is uh while this is simmering and i just put a little butter let me just throw a little a little bit of black pepper in there and i keep threatening to uh, get a proper salt shaker a little bit more this is actually a drink thing you put a straw in there and what else i need oh i got one more thing here but the man wanted me to put in a uh, a flavor cube i'm gonna turn this down so i'm gonna put one flavor cube in her in in her at her at her request i should have i was trying to say turn that down a little it does pretty good these little these little flavor cubes i'm not against them they they do add a little bit of a little bit of uh, flavor to it and I'm just putting one big one throw that bad boy in there get that thing stirred around get everything going all right so uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go with the comments here all right so this comment is from uh, the Clevelander do you need a fishing license to fish there and folks, I don't even know what video it come off of. I'll make the assumption it come off that video when I was fishing over there for uh, tilapia in the river, which everybody told me don't eat that fish because it's basically sewage fish. And the answer to that question is I have no idea. To be honest, I don't know if I needed a fishing license or not. I mean, I'm here. But I'm not doing a lot of fishing. I haven't done a lot of fishing. And that's a question I, I can't answer. Maybe I do need a fishing license uh, as a tourist. But everybody that I've known that has went fishing, nobody's told me anything about they had to go get a fishing license. So maybe somebody can clear, clear that up in the comments of this video about whether or not you know tourists or I, I, I mean, I don't think it has to do with what visa you're on. Um, whether or not you have to have a fishing license, period. I really don't know. But no, I do not have a fishing license. Um, but, you know, I'm a redneck from the country. And it won't be the first time I got caught fishing. Well, not caught, but it won't be the first time I went fishing without a license. Um, you know, when you're from the country, way back in the sticks, redneck, growing up, game warden is not uh, one of the favorite people that we like to come across. I guess it's sort of like, you know, if you were uh, a bootlegger back there in Prohibition running moonshine, you know, you didn't want to see the revenueers coming through no more than myself as a young redneck you know wanted to see the game warden coming through because hell you know we didn't get fishing licenses we didn't buy hunting licenses hell we're hunting and fishing on our own damn family's land over there why the hell would we want to go buy a hunting and fishing license screw that so like a game warden game warden was not not a very well liked person for me growing up as a young redneck, the backwoods of Mississippi and then, you know, living in Texas either. You didn't want to see them. So anyhow, so that's the answer to your comment, my friend. I don't know. I don't know. But I haven't known the first person here, local, local or tourist, foreign, uh, that's had a fishing license. You know what I'm going to do? I think I'm going to save. I put most of that in there. Put most of those noodles in there. I could go all, all in, but I think if I go all in, it's just going to make too much of a big old mess. And I've got that on 240. 
I'm gonna put a little more cream in there. I want it real creamy. I'll put a little more cream. Drop this thing down to, uh, I will say 160 for now. I think 140 is where it's boiling at. But I'm gonna pop the lid on there. And I'll just go to the next comment. So that's that's a good that's a good question about the fishing license. You certainly don't want to get caught up, you know, if you're out there as a foreigner fishing, you're supposed to have a damn license, what have you. All right. Let's see, this is from uh Aplac One. Maybe you can do a tour of Grande Island. I was there in the 60s. This is a fortress which was used to guard the bay. I don't know if it's worth a tour these days. I have uh, Grande Island on my radar. And I don't know uh, what the status is over there today. I know there was some squabbling about a year ago because the Chinese were trying to take over Grande Island and that next little island for uh, tourism purposes. And uh, the locals were objecting to it. That's what I read. I don't know if that's true. Uh, but yeah, what he's talking about is Grande Island is right in the middle of Subic Bay. And strategically, that's what made Subic Bay and made Manila Bay, makes these two bays um, the ideal uh, military installations because you have those islands in the middle that you can fortify and you can defend the harbor. Um, so yeah, I've, I've definitely got that on my radar to go to Grande Island. And once I do that, then I'll figure out what's over there. Uh, you know, there was a resort at some, you know, years back, I, I think it's closed down, but I don't know. I don't know, but yes, I'm going to go over to Grande Island and check it out. And I'm looking forward to it. I've got that and the Corregidor uh, definitely on my radar. So, uh, yeah, look for that in the near future here. Um, have I ever tried the, uh, this is from Matthew. Have you ever tried the Filipino-made Antonov vodka? As a vodka drinker, I was pretty floored of how good it tastes and the affordability. No, I, I don't think I have. If I have, I don't remember it. I'm not a big vodka drinker. My buddy Pablo was. So next time I'm at the liquor store, I will pick up a bottle and try that, my friend. Okay, this is from, uh, all right, I think this is a German name. I'm not even gonna try it, man. Can I explain the smoking regulations in Angeles City? I can't, <clears throat> I'm not in Angeles City anymore, I'm over here. I know that here in Barrio Barreto, you can't smoke on the street. Um, you know, in the tricycles, they have the, the fines listed. Um, you know, first offense, I think it's 1,000 pesos. Second offense is 2,000. Okay, but I can tell you this, that they do enforce it. I've seen that personally with my own eyes, and basically I was walking out of, uh, oh no, I was sitting in a Sorry Sorry store right over there behind uh, Rico's. And there was a, I think she was British, British or Australian white chick was at that tattoo parlor getting a tattoo. And in the middle of her getting this tattoo, she stepped out and was smoking a cigarette. She was standing, you know, outside, basically on their doorstep, smoking this cigarette and the cops came by or somebody called the cops. I don't even want to speculate, you know, somebody dropped a dime on her or they just came by. But boom, they were over their owner on her because she was smoking outside in public. Now, I don't know the exact law, but I can tell you this. If you're here in Barrio Barreto, don't be smoking walking down the street. Don't be smoking in a tricycle. Don't be smoking in any public place. Now, as far as how the regulations work, I've yet to figure it out because some bars you go to, they're gonna have a smoking area. Some don't, some you can't smoke in. Um, I really don't know. I, I don't know what the exact regulations are. But I can tell you this, at least here in Barrio Barreto, from what I've seen, just don't smoke walking down the street, don't smoke outside. Um, you know, with this girl here, I think they ended up giving the chick a warning, but there was, you know, a couple cops over there dealing with the issue. She's outside smoking. Now maybe she was, you know, a little attractive uh, white chick. Maybe they were really over there trying to get her phone number or what have you. 
you know I used to be a cop myself there's an old saying that uh, the badge will get you pussy but the pussy will get your badge and that's damn true 100% true um, anyhow but as far as Angeles man somebody else have to explain that brother I just tell you don't I, I would say countrywide don't be walking down the street smoking you don't know how they're gonna enforce it where they're gonna enforce it okay uh, let's see bring back Jenny <laughs> shit man I man I'd love to uh, have Jenny full-time okay it's from uh, my buddy Bob do you know if the club Silver Star is still open hung around there 69 to 72 I think it was at the end of McSyside Drive last I heard it was still in business uh, don't know the answer to that one either but if somebody knows anything about the club Silver Star, let's go ahead and leave it down in the comments for uh, my buddy Bob. All right, this is from uh, Clemente. Am I a dual citizen? Uh, no, I'm not a dual citizen. I'm here riding a tourist visa like a lot of folks. And fortunately here in the Philippines, um, they do make it easy for, for us to stay here. I'm certainly appreciative of that. It's easy to stay uh, for extended periods on a tourist visa here. You know, other countries, it's not so easy. But we're fortunate here in the Philippines. Um, you know, as long as you keep going to immigration at the time hacks, renewing your visa, you have to get an I-card, which uh, uh, lasts for one year. At least mine expired one year. Uh, but no, I'm not a dual citizen. I'm, I was born in the U.S. I'm a U.S. citizen, and I'm just here on a on a tourist visa. That's how I stay here right now. Okay. And, and you know why that's a good question because a lot of people, I think initially coming onto my channel, they see my name as Marcos. You know, I'm a short guy. I got dark hair. A lot of people confuse me as being Filipino, um, so so that's a good question. But no, I'm I'm an American citizen and I'm here on a tourist visa. So thanks for uh, for the question. Let's see. This is from Alpha Omega. I've been a subscriber for a while. I understand the broken watch, but I still don't get the unlit cigar. It seems like the same as carrying around an unopened bottle of beer. Just interested and curious. No, that's that's actually a good question. Um, and there's a reason for it. You know, I'm a redneck from the backwoods of Mississippi, especially during those times. Well, I mean, it's pretty much the same now. Everybody either chews chewing tobacco or they dips uh, skull, you know, snuff, Copenhagen, some type of uh, chewing tobacco product. And I was no different. When I was a kid, you know, my, my dad chewed Red Man tobacco or Levi Garrett. And when I was a young man, I'm talking five, six years old, you know, I was going going bird hunting with my dog and a, and a BB gun by myself. And, you know, went squirrel hunting with my grandfather with a damn 22 rifle. And I had a damn pouch of chewing tobacco in my back pocket. So I chewed tobacco at an early age. Luckily, uh, I never took to smoking or anything like that, but after, shit, I don't know how old I was, but it was, uh, you know, I guess, early teenage years I just I quit chewing tobacco and I'm glad I did because you know it costs money it's uh, not exactly a great habit when you're in the city when you're on a country who gives a shit you know you're spitting on dirt but if you go to the city you're trying to sit in a building whatever I mean what do you do people are sitting there with spit cups it's, it's disgusting so anyhow I quit uh, quit chewing tobacco the cigar 
if I put that in my mouth and I walk around all day just kind of chewing on it, it just gives me that little bit of familiar flavor. It takes me back to my youth when I used to chew tobacco back out in the country. And I like the taste. And so I love to chew on a cigar and then uh, smoke it at the end of the day. So it's not, <clears throat> it's not just for a prop. It's not because it's just the looks cool, whatever. I just like the taste of it. You know, me and my old man like to sit on the, sit outside on the patio, drink a Jack and Coke, chew on some cigars, and at the end of the night, we'll light them up. But you know, I've, I've never been a smoker. I don't eat, you know, when I smoke a cigar, it just goes in my mouth, it's for the taste. So me chewing on a cigar sort of has to do with the fact that I used to chew tobacco. It's that familiar flavor. I do like the flavor. You do get a little, you know, depending on how long you chew it, you do get a little bit of high off of chewing on that cigar. I just savor it. So there is a reason I walk around with an unlit cigar. I like the taste. Uh, so thanks for the comment. I'm sure a lot of people, uh, well, I've seen comments in the past. Hey, you know, jackass, light that cigar, light it. Well, I do at the end. It don't just go in the trash, but I chew on it, savor the flavor, and then later on, I'll spark that thing up. Let's see. Am I still alive after pouring raw chicken marinade over potatoes? That's from Steven. <laughs> you know, man, sometimes when I, I, I guess I took the damn marinade, yeah, I did. I took the marinade that the chicken had been marinating in and I poured it over, over the potatoes. But folks, a lot of times when I'm doing these cooking shows, you know, I'm three sheets to the wind. I love to listen to some Kid Rock, fire up, uh, fire up the grill or this damn cast iron skillet, and go to work. And drinking is part of it, you know. So when I'm drinking, sometimes shit don't go as planned. But yeah, that's that's probably a good concern, man. Now look, even those potatoes, I cooked the hell out of those potatoes. So even though I poured chicken marinade on there. I'm not, I'm not eating them unless they're well done, so I think I'm okay, but that is a good point. Maybe I shouldn't be pouring the damn raw chicken juice on the potatoes, but man, I had the, you know, I had sauce in there. Shit, I didn't want to waste that sauce. Had to be done, my friend, but thanks for your concern, uh, Steven Johnson. Let's see. Let's see, what am I at right now? I love Subic Bay, but found it very boring during the day. Uh, what else can you do there? Is there a poker room, casino, anything to pass the time during the day? Um, yeah, I think there's a casino over on SBMA. At least I drove by there. I've never been inside, so I can't really properly testify to it. But yeah, I mean, there's a. I mean, there's there's a lot of things to do here. Um, you know, aside from the, wa the typical water sports, I mean, you can go island hopping, you can go scuba diving. You know, this is some of the best scuba diving as far as the wrecks. Now, the water is not crystal clear like a lot of places, but as far as the wrecks, from what I'm told, you know, this is one of the best places uh, to dive for the number of wrecks and the history of the wrecks. We got floating bars you can go hang out on during the day. And, now, folks, it's starting to get windy, so if there's a little wind noise, you just got to deal with it. We just got a brand new SM, uh, what's it, SM Central. We got one of the nicest SMs in the Philippines now. Now, before, the old SM in Longapo was shit. It's like a cracker box, you couldn't even push your stroller in there, but the new SM is awesome. Uh, it's nice, it's clean, it's not overcrowded, it's wonderful. And folks, my goodness! Come on over here, baby, say hello to everybody. Here comes the beautiful Fatima making a cameo appearance. Baby, say hello to everyone. Hello. And what did you bring the king, baby? Yeah. Hmm? Thank you very much, folks. She just rolled in here. I didn't even ask her. Brought me a Cole Heineken and my Yeti, uh, my Yeti uh, Colster. Thank you, honey. Yeah, I'm done with that. Thank you very much. And that's, that's a good wife number one right there. She is the best Filipino wife number one I've ever had. Man, I am 
She is so blessed and so lucky to be with me that she don't, I mean, she knows it. Everybody knows it. She knows how lucky she is to be with me. And I feel uh, very blessed as well to have her in my life. Yeah, so, uh, you know, you got Harbor Point Mall. There's another mall over there. So you've got all the shopping things to do. As far as gun range, I don't know if there's a gun range, but uh, there was one in Angeles. I'm pretty sure there's one over here. Uh, let's see what else to do. Shoot, man. I mean, you know, uh, fishing at Malawan Park, and they, <laughs> you got to be a damn good fisherman because I ain't never caught nothing over there. But you can still go over there and fish. What else? Take a tricycle ride on the far side of Subic Bay and go buy you a handmade chopping block. That's a day adventure. If you're interested, all you gotta do is uh, find my man Francis or uh, Jason in the Lamborghini. They'll take you on that tour. You wanna go mountain climbing? Come right over here to San Isidro and climb uh, Bacillia O. It's, it's a little bit technical. You watch my videos. Mm. But the answer is, there's a lot of things to do outdoors. A lot of it is centered around the bay, a little island hopping, um, you know, snorkeling at that one little island. You know, tour the markets. There's a lot of things to do other than the bars. But like a lot of things, these little things, you gotta kinda talk to a local here to get it out of them. And every time, you know, no matter where you're at in the world, every time you talk to a different local, you find, some, you know, find out about something something new to do and to go see. Now you're gonna have to drive a little bit, but you can go down to Mount Samat. That's also on, my, on our radar. We've got all these World War II historical sites penciled in on the radar, but we've just been, you know, other things pop up, come up that we're dealing with and we just haven't had a chance to uh, start hitting the historical sites. But folks, we're basically, you know, right here. I don't want to start talking about the whole history of World War II, but you know, the Bataan Peninsula, we always we all say Bataan and the Filipinos say Bataan. It's the way I hear them pronounce it. Um, but there's a lot of historical sites and monuments and stuff to see. But yeah, and maybe maybe some some locals here can weigh in on that, my friend. Okay, this is from Singapore Dan. You ever find that lake you were looking for? And he's referring to uh, Lake Gogo up in the mountains here. No, I did not find Lake Gogo. At least I don't think I did. Because me and wife number one walked all the way to these waterfalls and it's a little small. I mean, it's a beautiful waterfall as you saw in the video. I don't know if that's where we were at because I didn't pull the location. But I have a friend over in uh, Magdalena who's gonna roll with me. I gotta go see him. And we're gonna roll over there. And uh, his, his girl's family lives up in that area so I'm just gonna drop off my crew. They're gonna hang out with her family and he and I are gonna march the final steps over to uh, Lake Gogo and see if it actually exists. You know, just punch punch the damn grid in and pull it up on Google Maps and, and just, we're, we're gonna find it. So yes, we are gonna push, but no, as of the making of this video, the uh, elusive Lake Gogo we have not been to. <laughs> Folks, so many, so many comments, it's funny as hell, you know, and how do I respond to it without getting in trouble with YouTube? You know me, I don't really... It took Jesus three days to get resurrected, the GoPro did it in two. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, you know a, a lot of people, a lot of people tell me that the reason they, they come to my channel is for the comments. They just, they just come to the video and they watch the comments because the subscribers and the commenters are the true entertainment. And <laughs> I'm fine with that. 
but yeah that's uh, there's some funny stuff here but how do i answer it without just going down a rabbit hole all the hate all the hate stuff is funny but do i really want to take the time to answer it i mean what I discovered early on is like when I was poking the haters and the trolls and all the people fucking with you. The more you poke them, the more they stay around. And the good, the good of it is, it's entertainment. It's free entertainment. You have people writing, you know, two thousand word essays, you know, ripping me a new asshole. And at first, you kind of, you know, you're new. You, you, you kind of take it personal, and then you realize, wait a minute, this dude just wrote two thousand fucking words. And I don't know if that light helps or not. This guy just wrote two two thousand fucking words. He's helping me real well with the algorithm. He did all the work. He's providing free entertainment to my other subscribers. People are laughing. So at first I I, I poked with them, messed with them, and then I just got really too busy. Just I mean not I don't I don't give a fuck, but. I think it was good I poked them at first because maybe a lot of you came to my channel after reading some of these comments or you know or when I was I, you know really screwing with them so I think it worked out in the beginning but but like these it's just not worth unless it's really funny I, I just just don't uh, I don't got time <laughs> Like this, nah, fuck it. I'll just let you be funny. You can, you can just be funny. Like this one here. Now this is good, clean fun. This is good, clean fun. And I, and I'll throw, I'll give you a shout out, man. It's from Robert. I don't know if you've, if you've left other comments, but this one here. I've been told that you sell skinny jeans for men from your merchandise. How much are they? And that's good, clean fun right there. <laughs> man, I'm gonna tell you what. It'd be, a, it'd be a cold day in hell before I started selling skinny jeans. Unless it was, you know, just to continue expressing my opinions about men wearing skinny jeans. But you, you brought up the comment, and I appreciate it because I'm going to tell you why. A couple weeks ago, I read an article. I started to do a video about it. I read this article that said scientists have done some research and I think it's 20 to 20 something percent. The average male in the United States of America, their testosterone level has dropped something like over 20 percent. Boom, they just proved my, my case and my theory. Go back and watch my video, you know, what I think about men wearing skinny jeans. You know, what I'll do is uh, put a link to that article down in that video, but basically they're saying, hey, men, men in America right now have 20 something percent less, less testosterone, their levels are 20 percent lower than, you know, dudes of my generation. And it's the, the, you know, the toxic feminism, plus you're wearing skinny jeans, cutting off the fucking circulation to your balls. So science, scientists just proved my theory but all you skinny jean wearing young bucks out there you know don't hate me hate the hate hate reality hate the scientists I'm, I'm just telling you what they have published as scientific research if you're wearing skinny jeans you know screwing with me about my fucking wardrobe and i don't wear skinny jeans well you got 20 percent less testosterone less testosterone than me my generation and the older generations who wouldn't be caught dead wearing that shit. So, yeah, you know, thanks for that comment, man. I'm glad, glad I, you brought that up. Um, okay, so somebody's asking in a smart ass way, why don't I have my own trike? Folks, I've, I've covered this so many times, you know. My buddy, my buddy Don, he's probably coming up on late 70s now in Thailand. He has this, this policy. Never drive anything with a motor in Southeast Asia. 
because if you do at some point you're going to be paying a local you crash into them they crash into you it's, it's money out of your pocket and transportation here is so damn cheap why would you open yourself up to that liability okay so let's let's add up numbers right i go out and buy a tricycle I buy a motorbike for say a thousand, add a tricycle, I throw some lights and just, just say, what am I, 1800 bucks into it? You know, I'd get me a nice one if I did. I'd just say 2000, because I'd put some lights and stereo and all that shit in it, right? 2000 into it. Now I gotta go get a driver's license. Now the government's in my fucking life. Okay, now I gotta go get registration. Now the government's in my fucking life. Now I gotta pay insurance. Now the insurance people and the government's in my fucking life. I drive this tricycle, I go through a police checkpoint, now the police are fucking with me. Okay, I'm driving this vehicle, and I get into a crash, now somebody's trying to get money from me. And damn, this is starting to stick, I gotta turn this way down. I just open myself up for liability, somebody's trying to get money out of me. Folks, most of, most everybody who lives here, who moves here, if you're just a, a retiree on a small pension, you're going to retire here on a, on a small pension, any type of motor vehicle opens, your, opens you up to liability that if you crash into the wrong person or run over a child or something like that and you're at the wheel, you're going to lose everything. Okay, I have zero, zero liability. Why? Because I don't fucking drive. My liability in that room is zero. If I'm riding in a tricycle and the tricycle driver uh, disobeys a traffic regulation, he is getting the ticket, not me, the passenger. If he has a flat tire, I get out of that tricycle I get into a new tricycle and I continue my journey. Okay, if his engine breaks down, same deal. He runs out of gas, same deal. I don't have to find a parking space. When I go to the mall on a tricycle, I get out at the front door and walk right in. Why would I want to try to find a parking space? Okay, all of these reasons, plus, oh, by the way, Public transportation here is so cheap that, you know, the gentleman here complaining why I don't get a trike, you know, cheap bastard, what have you. I don't have a tricycle for my family. You just don't understand it. I have a driver. Do you have a driver that drives you around? No, you don't. I know you don't. You don't got no driver. You drive yourself. You, tr you drive yourself, man. I'm either sitting in the back with a cold beer in my hand uh, or talking on the phone or making videos I got a driver <laughs> think about that what's your level of success because you got a nicer car than me and I don't have my own tricycle for me I have a fucking driver everywhere I go whether I'm in a bus I got a driver I'm in the back like Donald J. Trump I get in a taxi, where am I at? I'm in the fucking bag like DJT. I got chicks in the front, I got chicks in the back. I don't need a chick, I don't need a car to impress anybody. Impress you or a woman or anybody else in the world. I don't give a shit. I got a driver and I'm riding in the back. That's my level of success. I have zero liability because I'm not in my home country. And let me tell you this, if you crash into a local anywhere in Southeast Asia, most of the time, I'm not gonna say all the time, but I'm gonna say most of the time, you're going to lose. This ain't Kansas. You ain't in Kansas no more. You crash, they crash into you, you're gonna end up paying most of the time, not all the time. I drove a car one time in Thailand. I went to the market. I was coming back. It was against my, my better judgment. But my wife's uh, brother-in-law, whatever, insisted that I drive his car. I did, against my better judgment. 
A local ran into me while I was stopped at a light. He sideswiped the car. Now, we got out, he saw that there was a throng, foreign guy standing there. He knew he was about to get paid. He was so excited. He couldn't contain himself. We went like that and rubbed out the paint. There was no dent. You know, no damage whatsoever. It was just a little bitty side swipe. I had to pay him 10,000 baht and thank him. Kap kun krap. Here's your 10,000 baht, $300. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, have a nice day. Thank you for running into me, motherfucker. But because I'm in your country, I have to pay you. Folks, that's the way things work. You know why I got clipped? Because I was behind the fucking wheel of a motor vehicle. You know why I haven't got clipped since? Because I don't drive fucking cars in Southeast Asia. All right, folks, I had to get fucking money. Bring me some water. This is thickening up a little bit too thick. I need to add some water to it. Yeah, so I understand, brother. You're you're in the American mindset where. You know, most places in America, you do have to have a vehicle. And in America, you're in the mindset that the, the better vehicle you have, the more successful you are, and the better looking chick you're gonna be able to get. Okay, I got it. I got a different mindset in you, and I'm not living in America. Even if I went back to America, I would, I would try to live somewhere where I didn't have to have a car. I'd live downtown. You know, work downtown where I could walk. And if you think about how much you spend on your vehicle in the U.S., you, you, you spend all your damn money. Guess how much I spend on a vehicle here? Fucking zero. I spend money paying people for a service. Not just paying people to take me from point A to point B. You know, my buddy Francis and my buddy Jason they don't just take me from point A to point B. They cater to me. They help with the child, with the kids. They help load stuff up. They're fucking trustworthy. They're my friends. They can uh, go do things that I ask them to do without uh, me having to go there. Plus, I'm stimulating the local economy, okay? Instead of going out and buying my own vehicle that for the most part is gonna sit in a parking spot I'm putting money in other people's pocket and I'm stimulating the local economy. And again, I'm paying them for an overall service, not for a ride. So even though, yeah, they take me from point A to point B, they do a lot more for us. Um, so anybody that wants to think, I'm a cheap Charlie, I don't have enough money to buy a vehicle, uh, you can think what you want. You go ahead and think that. But, um, you know, in Thailand, I do have a motorbike. I do ride a motorbike there because I like to go riding out through the country. You know, it's low liability, but I don't even like to drive that through town. I just take a damn motorbike taxi, then the liability is on them if they sideswipe a vehicle or something. Um, so anyhow, kind of, kind of enough about that, but if you really just want to, you know, not have to budget any <laughs> any unnecessary uh, police encounters because you crash into a local, just go with my buddy Don's uh, policy. It's personal policy. Don't drive anything with a motor in Southeast Asia. And it's sound advice. So that's why I don't have a trike. I don't have my own trike. Matter of fact, my friend's got one down there brand new. He said, hey, you can drive this anytime you want. If I wanted to, I don't want to. I like riding in the back like DJT with a fucking beer in my hand, you know, making videos, talking on the phone, enjoying the view. Okay? There you go. So anyhow, thanks for the comment. A little smart ass, but whatever. Entertaining. Okay. Blah, blah. Some more hatred. <laughs> This dude Rob says, hey man, I'm, I'm, I got your bag of shoes. I'm fishing in the creek with the Moab 2s. They really are waterproof. <laughs> you know, man, we ain't seen nothing. We ain't seen the first sighting of them shoes. 
Them shoes are gone. Probably went to a Longapo or Manila on some Ukai Ukai. Probably on a sidewalk down in Manila, you know, a little secondhand sidewalk stall selling my damn shoes. I don't give a shit. Shit happens. Man, hey, Seuss. <laughs> Look at hey, Seuss. He loves Fatima for some reason. I mean, well, who doesn't love Fatima? Everybody loves Fatima. But damn, hey, Seuss, man, you keep leaving these comments, man. You've been around for a long time. Uh, hey, man. You know, Fatima is a beautiful lady. And I'm not, I'm not a jealous dude, you know, so when I'm... Even in America, when I went places and dudes look at your lady, well, that's fucking nature. I never took any offense to it as long as I didn't say anything or, you know, lay hands on her. If you're with a beautiful girl, naturally guys are going to look at her, you know. And if nobody's looking at your lady, you're, you're, you know, you're probably with a fucking land will. So that doesn't bother me at all. People look at my chick. And uh, hey, Seuss, man, you've been such a loyal subscriber. I mean, I don't know if you're a grown man or a 12-year-old kid. I mean, hell, this is YouTube and the Internet. I have no idea. But, man, some of your comments are pretty damn funny, man. You're not, you, you're not hurting my feelings at all, brother. Yeah, Fatima is a beautiful girl. She is lucky to be with me. So, folks, my, my little dish right here. Uh, not you saw me I kind of screwed up I put that whole block of cheese in there it's taking a while to melt but I think this is gonna turn out real well and let me come over here and just show you where I'm at let me get the, uh, the $1,200 RX 100 mark 5 get it to work to do its specific job here and check that out over there check out the throne got the solar disco lights on there but here you go right here that's the uh that's the consistency that we got going on shit set that over there all right so we're at 120 and it's it's bubbling oh yeah that's gonna be delicious so whenever this cheese this block of cheese right here melts down it's about half melting cut it up into a few blocks I think we're looking at about maybe five minutes of simmering. Five minutes of simmering, maybe. And folks, we should be in business. I don't, I don't foresee it taking that much longer. Okay, good job there, Sony. I'm sitting here ragging on Sony, but my main camera is a Sony. I'm not mad at Sony. I'm just mad at this particular camera. And the GoPro. Oh, somebody made a comment about the GoPro getting resurrected. Folks, so far, that GoPro, when it resurrected itself, it's just been a champion. It's, uh, it's, it's good to go. Now, a couple of times since then, it has uh, locked up to where I had to pull the battery out and put it back in. But I, you know, I think that's always a problem with GoPros or whatever, but so far, knock on wood, the same damn camera that I dropped during that cooking show resurrected itself, it's working, and I'm just gonna keep using it until it goes tits up. But if DJI comes out with a, with a new Osmo action with equivalent or better audio, I will give that little camera a shot. But again, I'm with the GoPro because the audio works for me. So, folks, I may take a break here. I hope you were entertained by answering just a few of the comments. And, and folks, you know, when, when you get a thousand pieces of com communication coming your way, what can you do? You just got to pick out a few and, and, and try to answer them. That's what I'm going to start doing, a little better job at doing that. But I want to thank everybody for joining me on this little impromptu cooking show overlooking Times Square here on Subic Bay in the Philippines at the foot of the Bacilla Oak Mountain on the balcony underneath the stars here at my penthouse suite. It's, a, uh, it's just a beautiful evening. And 
you know, had some things go down in life that uh, I don't even talk about it. It's such a beautiful night tonight. I'm not going to talk about that drama. I'll save that for another video. But uh, I'm going to let this simmer for, like I said, maybe maybe five more minutes. Make sure we're good to go and all the cheese is melted. Oh, wow. It's like a full simmer now. Make sure this damn thing don't stick. It's getting thick. Yeah, so uh, once I get this plated, get this cheese melted down, I'll get that little Sony RX100 over there, get a close-up for you. And also when we dig into this beautiful dish here on the inside. Again, folks, if you're not a subscriber on my channel, at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, I think it's right there. Hit that little overstay road sign, and I think you're supposed to click a bell to get notified when I publish new videos, and there is no publishing schedule. I don't wear a watch anymore. I haven't worn a watch in 10 years. Well, I wear a watch, but they're broken. I just set them for 5 o'clock. They're just jewelry pieces. So I don't have a publishing schedule. So if you subscribe and click that bell, you'll know when I publish a video or when I go live, coming to you live from wherever I'm at. And clicking that subscribe button helps us out with the algorithm. Oh yeah, I'm supposed to say, uh, hit a thumbs up or a thumbs down. That helps us out too. Comments, all that stuff. I don't think, nope. Nah, baby, I'm okay right now with the beer. You wanna come out and say, say one more, make one more cameo appearance? I'm almost done with the food here. Folks, I'm gonna try to get the beautiful Fatima to come on out. I know Jesus wants to see her. <laughs> hey, everybody wants to see her, but come on out here, baby. Look at this, look at this beautiful girl. My goodness, she's so beautiful. What do you think about that? It's gonna be delicious? Huh? Mm. Baby, that's that smell coming off there. My goodness. So maybe five more minutes, honey, and I'll, I'll be done here. All right? Okay. Folks, the beautiful, the beautiful Filipina wife, number one, Fatima. And baby, what do you call that dance? Is that the wash the windows dance? Oh, okay. <laughs> She's so funny, folks. She does all these little dances, you know. We're always messing around, joking. That's pretty much it for the cooking portion of this show. And I want to thank you for joining me. I'll go ahead and stop this thing before my memory card gets full. All right, folks, here's what we got. This is the final product right here. Oh my goodness. Now that piece of cheese, that big old piece of cheese didn't melt, but shit happens. Let me try this. The forest G's already ate it. He said it was delicious. Let me give it a go, hold on. Mm. Mm. That's fucking awesome. That's pretty damn good. I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>